According to ancient Maya beliefs, the year bearer God carried the burden of the year on his back and then passed it on to his successors. So too, the Maya themselves carried a burden of service to their many gods that their communities might prosper. When the Spanish conquered the Maya in the 16th century, they brought Catholicism and a new god, Christ, who carried the weight of redemption for all mankind. Today, for the highland Maya of Mexico and Guatemala, shouldering this dual burden of Christian and Maya service has evolved into a complex set of practices called the cargo system. The name derives from the Spanish words cargar, to carry, and encargado, to be in charge of. These practices are not only religious, but they are economic as well. For through the cargo system, a man gains status and prestige by giving his wealth away. great Maya astronomers and mathematicians who once walked through these halls have vanished. But the spirit of reverent labor and service to the gods remains in a modern institution known as the cargo system. Religious faith infuses all aspects of this system but it has important social and economic consequences as well. Crosses are everywhere in the highlands, but they are the crosses of the old religion, doorways to the ancestral gods. When the Spanish priests arrived with the new religion of crucifixion, of blood, of ceremonial liquor, and of sacrifice, it was not difficult for the Maya to fuse the old and the new. The Maya still worship the old gods, and the shaman makes a blood sacrifice so that the earth will not shake. In one of the great fiestas, the Maya mock the haughty ways of the light-skinned Spaniards. The fiesta is paid for by men who are part of the cargo system. Introduced by the Spanish conquerors, it is a system of civil and religious obligations organized into progressive offices. A man must work his way up through the four levels of the system, receiving no payment from the community, but spending large amounts of money to sponsor religious celebrations for the saints of the Catholic Church, who possess many attributes of the ancient Maya gods. When a man pledges a year of service to the saints and his community, it is both a burden and a privilege. It is his cargo. He must be a good person. He must be faithful to his trust. For 12 months, he must bear his cargo. To no one else will he leave his cargo, will he leave any portion of his cargo. Let no one talk against him. Let no one murmur against him. May he keep in sight. May he keep before his eyes his cargo, his service. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thousands of Maya live spread out in the hills, in hamlets or parajes, and come together in town for market days and for ritual celebrations. These are not towns as we think of them, but ceremonial centers in which economics and religion are completely intertwined. The cargo system is fundamental to this blend of the secular and the sacred. The towns are mostly uninhabited except for the mestizo shopkeepers who sell the Maya candles, liquor, and other goods for fiestas, and the cargo holders who must reside there a year to perform their duties, which range all the way from sweeping the cabildo, or city hall, to nailing the Christ image to the cross on Good Friday. The more expensive the cargo position he undertakes, the more prestige a man attains, In this subsistence economy, where does a man find the money to pay for his cargo? Traditionally, the Maya have been corn farmers, and in a good year, the average annual income is about $1,200. A farmer grows enough corn for his family and the surplus is sold for cash to buy other necessities and discharge his obligations in the cargo system. <laughs> Corn has always played a central role in the religion and mythology of the Maya. We began to talk about the creation and the making of our first mother and father, of yellow corn and of white corn, the gods made our flesh, of cornmeal dough, they made our arms and they made our legs. The Maya practiced slash and burn agriculture. They cut trees and underbrush from a piece of land, burn it, and then plant corn, beans, and squash with a digging stick. To us, Augustine Gomez appears to be a simple corn farmer. But to the Maya, he is a man of prestige and influence because he has passed through all four levels of the cargo system. He is called a pasado and is treated with respect and deference because he has given away large amounts of his own money and has borrowed thousands of pesos from kinsmen and friends to pay for his cargo positions. Senor Gomez wears the same high-backed sandals that the ancient Maya did to mark a man of prestige. But for the younger men of the highlands, corn farming alone will no longer support the more expensive cargo positions. <laughs> <laughs> 